Good morning. Welcome to Seton Hall University. I am Susan Sherrick, Director of the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. As one of the key organizers of today's event, I'm delighted and honored that all of you can join us today for the second annual Col Connect, Collaborate and Careers Conference. It's an innovative virtual event that brings together New Jersey's higher education community and our state's cybersecurity business leaders. Today's conference celebrates October as Cybersecurity Awareness Month. What we would like everyone to become aware of today is that cybersecurity is the fastest growing industry in the world. Cybersecurity professionals are on the front lines of keeping everything from bank accounts to top military secrets safe, but they can't do it without our help. So today you will learn about how New Jersey colleges and universities are preparing students for careers in cybersecurity. We're also going to let you in on a big secret. This is the hottest job market on the planet. We are witnessing an explosion of highly paid jobs and new career paths in cybersecurity. Average salaries begin at more than $72,000 annually and can exceed $200,000 over time. Jobs are available to students and new graduates with backgrounds in a wide range of academic disciplines. In New Jersey alone, there are more than 11,000 cybersecurity positions available and more than 450,000 open nationwide. And if you think that cybersecurity jobs are just for techies, think again. The cybersecurity field is interdisciplinary and comprehensive. Many industries are looking for young talent to get into cybersecurity. Now, I would like to introduce my colleague, Dr. Manfred Minnemeyer, head of our university cybersecurity programs to share with you conference details. Good morning. We have an exciting day ahead of us. The conference's keynote address and workshops are designed to provide students and new graduates with valuable resources and networking opportunities. Students will learn about the different approaches into cybersecurity, including academic research opportunities, internships, educational initiatives, and many career choices, including computer science and information systems, business and management, diplomacy, finance, government, psychology, law, and modern languages. We will also discuss diversity, inclusion, and equity, and the importance of attracting more women and minorities into this career path. New this year, we are offering three sessions showcasing exciting technical skills for practitioners. There are tutorials on the Python language for beginners, applications of the Splunk data analytics software to protect against cyber threats, and computational techniques for data privacy to protect against information leakage and reverse engineering. We especially thank our sponsors, PSCG, and the New Jersey Economic, and Economic Development Authority and our conference partners, UPJ and EDGE, the region's nonprofit technology partner, as well as the company Splunk, a leader in cloud data platforms, and Libya Technologies, a leader in computational data privacy. We are extremely honored to kick off our conference with welcome remarks from Dr. Brian Bridges, the Secretary of Higher Education for the State of New Jersey, and Seton Hall University Provost, Dr. Katja Passerini. Next, Dr. Charita Frierson, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, will introduce our keynote speaker, Gurdip Kaur, Chief Information Security Officer at PSEG. Gurdip's address will be followed by four 50-minute workshop sessions. The complete workshop schedule is in the Hoover Conference app. We will then take a half-hour break for networking in the conference app. At 12.30 p.m., back by popular demand, we begin our day in the life session during which you'll hear from students and recent graduates about the cybersecurity internship and job experiences, along with a training expert from private industry. Afterwards, you can attend one of the three technical skills tutorials to learn about introductory Python, Splunk data analytics and computational data privacy. 
Thank you and enjoy the conference. I would now like to introduce Seton Hall University Provost Dr. Katja Pastorini for welcome remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, good morning, everyone. On behalf of President Josephine Iyer and the faculty, staff, administrators, and students of Seton Hall University, I'm delighted to be here uh, at the second New Jersey Cybersecurity Virtual Conference. And generally, I would say I would like to see all of you in person. But there isn't more anything more fitting than having a cybersecurity conference online. So this is our perfect venue to be together and to learn more about the tools and breaches to the tools that we use that we're trying to protect uh, our country against. I would like to thank everyone for being here and many of our sponsors and supporters have already been mentioned, but I would like to thank the organizers who are behind the scene. They're not in the dark web, but they are behind the scenes, making sure that everything will work smoothly today, today especially in our interactions with our UA apps. So thank you very much. I just want to give you a couple of numbers and you heard some of them already from Susan uh, in our introduction, but I will say a few more. One point eight millions, 1.8 millions. Those are the numbers of unfilled cybersecurity jobs in 2022 nationwide. And that number is up 20% from 2015, according to the Center for Cyber Safety and Education. If you look at other articles, they actually go up and talk about 3.5 million unfilled jobs nationwide. And then salaries, as you heard, from six figures and up. It's difficult and costly to find, train, and retain cybersecurity talent, especially because we're asking them to be able to work 24 7 for 365 days of the year. Cybercrime does not stop. So the good news is that it's not hard to find a job in cybersecurity. And the Bureau of Labor Statistics actually predicts that in the next 10 years, the jobs in cybersecurity will continue to grow at a 30% rate, which is astonishing. And as Susan said at the beginning, most of the RE managers are also emphasizing soft skill, not just technical skills, but soft skills that are important because the technical skills can be learned and also will be learned on the job. And it cannot be otherwise because cybersecurity crime changes daily and we always have to learn new skills. So there are so many positions. Some are technical, application development, cloud management, risk management, and some are really based on law policies, analytics, understanding where crime is coming from and understanding human behavior which is also so important because a lot of the bridges, breaches come from the, a weak data point of the end user. So degrees in cybersecurity are in high demand, and this is why we're here today to talk about degrees with experts and to talk about getting an education in cybersecurity. And so it is really my pleasure to introduce today as we talk about education, the New Jersey Secretary of Higher Education Dr. Brian Bridges that is here with us. Dr. Bridges became his role in 2020 as part of Governor, Governor Phil Murphy's administration. And as secretary, Dr. Bridges is responsible for policy development and coordination of higher education activities for the entire state, including supporting institutions amid the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is a very, very hard job. So thank you, uh, Dr. Bridges, for, for your support and what a year to start a new job. Dr. Bridges also coordinates initiatives to improve college affordability in New Jersey through the state plan for higher education to enhance opportunities while promoting equity and access for all through programs such as, for example, the Community College Opportunity Grant. CCOG. 
Dr. Bridges previously served as, served as Vice President of Research and Member Engagement at the United Negro College Fund, UNCF, in Washington, D.C., and he served in various leadership roles, both on campus and off campus, including Vice Provost for Diversity, Access and Equity at Ohio University, Associate Director of the Center for Advancement of Racial and Ethnic Equity at the American Council on Education, also known as ACE, and Associate Director at the National Survey of Student Engagement, also known to us as NESI. He is former Assistant Professor of Higher Education Administration at the George Washington University, my own U.S. alma mater. Throughout his career, Dr. Bridges has served as media resource and provided expert perspective and analysis on numerous panels and advisory committees on issues related to HBCUs, learning environments and minority serving institutions and success factors for African American college students at predominantly white institutions. So I want to take a moment to thank very much Dr. Bridges for being here, but also for his great work and focus on achieving equity in higher education. And I'll pass it to Dr. Bridges. Well, thank you so much for that warm uh, welcome. I, I deeply appreciate the introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. And I want to thank especially Seton Hall for inviting me to have this dynamic conference as we recognize Cybersecurity Awareness Month. I'm delighted for our students to learn more about job opportunities in this fast growing and uh, ever changing industry as New Jersey builds economic resiliency and adapts to society's shift toward online financial transactions and social pro and professional interactions as well. The uh, ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, which we all have been affected by in some way or another, continue challenging all sectors to develop innovative solutions <laughs> to protect public health while conducting business safely. And as our industries adopt virtual operating models, vulnerabilities are at an all time high. And these highly paid in demand jobs are critical to protect New Jersey from cyber attacks. Cyber security jobs as noted already are among the fastest growing careers nationally, according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. Experts actually predict that cybersecurity jobs will grow 31% 31% through the rest of this decade, which is seven times faster than the national average job growth of 4%. That's amazing. One of the key areas of our state plan for higher education is ensuring our students have safe and welcoming learning environments that enrich their knowledge and prepare them for lifelong success, whether those learning environments are virtual or in person. Online learning in particular leaves students, families, and teachers vulnerable to malicious cyber attacks and given society's increased reliance on digital software and data systems, especially over the past 18 months of the pandemic, we've seen instances of cyber threat actors and Internet trolls becoming increasingly aggressive in their digital attacks. From Zoom bombing attacks on online learning platforms to protecting the integrity of our country's democratic election system, we need the creative energy and digital skills of our talented students that you all will discuss today during this conference to help self -guard, safeguard these environments and prevent attacks before they occur. New Jersey is and always will be a place where opportunity meets innovation. And as we work to restore our innovation economy, cybersecurity is essential and central to our economy strength moving forward. And our brilliant students are the critical gears we need to keep our, our engine, our economic engine moving. I want to sincerely thank Seton Hall for bringing students and industry leaders together today to learn from each other and showcase the various career pathways that are available and our colleges and universities are ready, willing and able to step up to the plate to help our students and future graduates be better prepared to contribute to this industry. I look forward to seeing which career path you choose and look forward to the outcomes from today's conference. Thank you for the opportunity to address you today. It is my pleasure now uh, to introduce uh, Gurdip Kaur. Uh, she is uh, the Chief uh, Cybersecurity Officer 
uh, for PSEG, and uh, she will uh, continue now with her keynote address. This is uh, Gadeep Kaur. I'm the Chief Information Security Officer for PSEG, and I am here today to talk about this very exciting, you know, career profession, cybersecurity. So before we start that, just a few fun facts. You know, uh, of course, I have been in cybersecurity for a very long time. I was a chief security architect for AIG, and prior to that, I was with IBM. I have worked uh, in multiple domains within the cyber, and um, I'm very passionate about cyber by itself. Now, the fun facts about me. Um, I work for shoes. I really love buying shoes and Jimmy Choo's are my favorite brand. And then sometimes people ask me the question, hey Gurdeep, um, as the chief information security officer for PSEG, uh, what keeps you up at night? And my response is the lights, because I want to make sure that the lights always remain on um, so that we can all enjoy the amenities or the facilities that we always take for granted. But then there is a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes uh, to make sure that it is all done um, safely and reliably. Uh, next slide, please. So I first want to cover the cybersecurity as a national security issue, right? So we have a critical infrastructure, right? Uh, that covers energy, uh, financial, healthcare, telecom, and the organizations of all sides, doesn't matter, you know, wherever you are, whatever location you are in, uh, they are vulnerable to the attacks, cyber attacks that could be carried out by immatures, by criminals, by ransomware gangs, by APT groups, the advanced persistent threat groups, or the state actors, right? So the digitally interconnected world actually has exponentially increased the number of security incidents and reported breaches. So PSCG is actually, you know, of course, we are the energy utility company and we are part of that critical infrastructure. And every single day at PSCG, we remain focused on maintaining the, the highest standards of safety, security, and resiliency. And from the cyber perspective, we have two things to cover, information technology and operational technology. IT, I think most of us understand, right? The computers, Microsoft Office, web applications, all of that part of the IT. OT, operational technology is what is running the power plants, that is running the manufacturing plants. And one example where it touches, like the interface happens is the AMI, Advanced Metering Interface. Those are the smart meters that will that you will be getting in your homes in, in the very near future. And what that will help you to do is you manage your energy consumption. You have a direct insight into how is the energy being consumed in your property. So I'm bringing that up here because as we as we move towards the the distributed energy renewable uh, sources. We build smart cities. Uh, we have these smart meters. All of these have cybersecurity implications. And we, as cybersecurity professionals, we work tirelessly and we enjoy doing that to conduct the threat modeling and continuous monitoring of the threat modeling and continuous monitoring of the security controls that are in place, right? So we, as cyber professionals, are contributing to maintaining the security for the nation and its citizens. Um, can we go back to the previous slide? Thank you. All right, so we learned our alphabet, right? And now we have I'm saying B is for breach. 
and the breaches, the names that you see here, it is just for the last less than 12 months. Right? And I will not be talking about um, all of these breaches, but what I would like to, you know, share a few breaches with you that keep you, uh, you know, start you thinking on, on why is it important? So let's uh, talk about the Spring Hill Medical Center. So that's a hospital in Alabama and in the very you know, past few weeks, and you may have read about that. It has been sued. And the lawsuit states that the um, a, a baby that was born there. Actually died. Nine months later because the hospital was experiencing ransomware attack at that time and it could not provide all the care needed for the birth to have a safe birth for the baby and the baby had you know that the tube was kind of coiled around the baby and the baby had a severe brain damage and could not survive beyond nine months so that is a very critical thing right it is about life and death so it is not simply a matter of computers bits and bytes it is a matter of life and death so that's what we we as cyber professionals um, we, we understand what is the the purpose right and what impact it could have other example i will um, bring up here is let's talk about the florida water supply treatment uh, station uh, that plant was in tampa florida and what happened uh, one day is the attackers got into the network they tried to increase the levels of um, i think it was hydrogen fluoride it was commonly it is called lye and uh, lye they tried to increase that level to to a dangerous uh, dangerously toxic fatal kind of levels fortunately the operator was right there looking at the screen and seeing something weird happening reported it right away and the law and enforcement agencies were involved and the attack was thwarted otherwise and then of course the treatment center the plant had additional controls in place but just imagine if that could actually succeed that could cause could be fatal could have caused you know toxic repercussions for the citizens of that township of that uh, you know in, in tampa florida the third example that I will, you know, pick up from this entire, um, you know, cloud is Colonial Pipeline. I think everyone must have at least heard about that one, right? It caused, a, um, you know, it, it captured national headlines and it did cause impact to people who were driving, you know, by car, um, driving by road, and they were thinking about, I hope I will get the gas to keep my car running unless of course you are running uh, an energy uh, an electric vehicle right so the colonial pipeline the ransomware attack happened on the IT side but the billing could not be done because the billing system was on the IT side and other logistic um, things could not be done hence colonial pipeline took the decision to shut off its operational technology environment the gas stopped flowing and that has huge repercussions. Colonial Pipeline ended up paying 75 Bitcoin in the ransomware. And the Department of Justice could recover 63.7 Bitcoins of that. So that's a good thing, but it did cause disruption in our daily lives. And as cybersecurity professionals, we, we can immediately relate we immediately know that there is a purpose for our profession and there is an impact if things go wrong right if the bad actors the bad guys bad girls can 
can take over some of the critical infrastructure or anything. It could be the your neighborhood bakery shop. It could be a school. It could be a hospital. It, it could be any of those things, right? And that would have an immediate impact on the lives of the citizens, on the lives of the consumers. Um, next to next slide, please. All right, so I did talk about, you know, a lot about the threats and um, the attacks and all. Let's just level set. I will not assume that everyone would know this. Some of you may know and kudos to you, but if not, let's just talk about the basics. What the asset is, asset is your car, asset is your photos in the cloud, right? Vulnerability is a weakness or the lack of protection. If um, your key is not working, your app is not uh, secure enough, um, the threat, yeah, someone could get into your car, could take, you know, just take your car away. Someone could get access to your photos and just leak them to broader public, right? So you need controls to address those weaknesses to make sure your assets stay protected, as much protected as they can be, right? And that's all about managing the risk. And then if things happen, then an effective plan to respond and recover. So that's all part of cybersecurity, cyber risk, cybersecurity compliance, incident response, incident recovery, right? And that all becomes, you know, what we as cyber professionals do on a daily basis. Uh, next slide, please. So how do we manage risk? I brought up a very simplistic view. Everything revolves around people. People are the strongest link. People can also be the weakest link. Strongest link because people are the talent. Every organization, every department, every country needs talented workforce, right? And that's so true for the cyber. The weakest link, sometimes people click on a phishing link, right? And that can lead to a potential security incident or a full blown cyber attack. So that's where people are in the middle, in the middle of everything. But then as you look at this framework, it is about defense in depth. People, process, technology. Where we have the layers of control. If one layer fails and other picks up and then worst case scenario, if all the, the preventative controls failed. We have something in place to detect the controls. We detect the control, but it has actually led or, or we escaped us and we have an incident in our hands, then the controls to respond and recover. So that's all about the defense in depth uh, mechanism for the cybersecurity. And then of course, you know, we talk I'm a big fan of security awareness, and it's not only for cybersecurity professionals. Every single person, every single employee should be well aware of the cybersecurity threats or the potential attacks and do your part in keeping your organization, your township, your country, your nation safe. And then one big part, I'm a big fan, the security design because I am a, I am a security um, techie by, with my background. I, I was uh, the security architect, so I love designing a secure architecture, modeling the threats, what are the potential threats and what controls need to be, to be put in place for those, right? So that's how we manage risk. And then if an incident happens, if it leads to a, breach, then the organizations usually have cyber insurance. Right, and that can help at least recover some of the losses. What you cannot or may not be able to recover is the reputation 
and the trust of your uh, consumers, your customers. So that is the key here. Right, uh, next slide, please. So these are, you know, some of the, the, the security functions. It's not an exhaustive list, but I did, you know, put together a few functions that my team and most of the cyber teams in any any given organization would be working on every single day, right? So we need to have the security policies. We need to have the, the security standards in place. We need to have a program to run our phishing exercises. We need to, to scan our assets continuously to see if there is a new vulnerability, if there is um, an, a new gap that was previously un detected if someone has got more privileges than they need to run their to do their job and then cannot miss the supply chain risk management and the example that i can give that again i hope that you might have read about it is the solar winds the solar winds attack that happened last year third no fourth quarter of last year and it was detected by the vendor named FireEye. So the attack happened with the solar winds itself getting compromised by the state actor. Their source code is infected. The updates are distributed to the customers of solar winds, and the customers included Microsoft, FireEye, various US departments, government departments, and many other companies around the around the world actually and they could actually cause the further harm in those uh, entities. Those were the customers of the solar winds. So that's what, uh, you know, the supply chain risk management has dominoes effect. And then the other thing that I would highlight here, operational technology security that I mentioned earlier, companies like PSPG and then the companies that have the manufacturing plants and everything in the utilities, um, they, have to have good solid security controls for operational technology. And that's where the security analysts need to have a good understanding of the operational technology environment and also learn about how to bring together the security and the operations piece in that environment. Security analytics, I heard about that earlier. Somebody mentioned the, the cloud, artificial intelligence, machine learning, right? So all of those things, I'm very excited about that because those things help us to build our, to strengthen our uh, cybersecurity posture. And you may find it very interesting, you know, if you are exploring your options uh, to build a career in cybersecurity. Next slide, please. Some of the jobs in cyber based on the functions that uh, we talked about earlier, right? The vendor risk analyst ties directly to the supply chain risk management. Security engineer, all the good, either the emerging or even the existing, but the cool technologies that need to be implemented. Penetration testing, tie that to the red teaming. And then of course the blue teaming and the purple teaming, all of that come together. Risk compliance analyst, because we have rules we have laws we have regulatory compliance requirements and those are good right you may have read in recently in the news the after the colonial pipeline happened the transport security administration came up with the security directive that is applicable to the critical gas pipeline operators and it comes up with you know the the controls that need to be in place to prevent these kind of cyber attacks. And then the forensics, that is very cool because that again has a direct link, the purpose and the impact. Because if something bad happens, you have the tools and the technologies. You can work as a forensics investigator. You can help find that evidence, help build the case against the bad guys. Cyber awareness training specialist, you love to raise awareness. You love to, to 
to inform people, to, to educate people about, hey, this is what you should do. Don't leave your webcam on all the time. Be label your uh, your documents. Password protect them. Use multi-factor authentication. Although these seem to be technical uh, descriptions or the technical controls, but it's the job of the cyber awareness training specialist to make sure that a non-technical anyone who is working in the organization can understand your those controls. And that that's a pretty um, impressive job. Then the SOC analyst, I'm pretty sure that all of you have heard about the SOC analyst where you are looking at the events, you are monitoring the events, correlating the events. Splunk, I heard someone mention about Splunk. That is one of the most popular uh, security incident and event management platform to actually gather those logs, correlate the events, and then bring out the anomalies, whether those are in the systems, those are in the behavior, those are in the network traffic, whatever those may be. And I don't have to mention again, but I will. This is very tempting. Average salary for entry level cybersecurity role is 72 grand. Isn't that cool? You are in your early 20s and you can make over 70K. If I was, you know, if it was 20 years ago, I would be like, wow, I can buy more shoes. I can do a job that I love to do. I'm doing something that has a positive impact. And then I'm also making enough dough to, to meet my own uh, lifestyle requirements. Uh, next slide, please. So if you're still with me, how do you get started? A lot of ways to do that. Internship, number one, you are still doing your undergrad. Assuming if there are any graduates, so they're welcome to the internships. PSCG has an excellent program. Every other organization has an excellent, or at least most of the organizations have, have internship program. Reach out, check the website, check the interns, check the careers website there and get in because the companies are, I can tell you at this time, so desperate to get the cyber talent. They will take the interns. They will provide free training. Yep, free training. Get you the certification and then keep you, help you develop, right? Professionally as well as in, a, in, 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 in your own, your personality, right? So that's the best way to get in the organization. Volunteer, you know, it's, it's always good to give back to your community. You know, and do events in your township, in your library, in the senior centers. You can do all of this remotely. And, and that's a good thing to do, as I said, anyway. If you are a techie, you love to write code, contribute to an open source project. Explore topics, technologies, learn on internet, AI, ML, deepfakes, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. Learn about these new technologies. Join the meetups. You will you may come across the experts or people who have experience in that. You will learn from them firsthand. Learn a programming language, whether you are planning to join cyber or not. Learn a programming language. Python is my favorite. And it will help you in other in other parts of you know whether you join another profession because today data analytics is is very much required for every profession you know that you are in. You want to analyze the data. Data is a king or queen and a programming language will help you do that analytics. And then if we talk about the security, you do the cyber analytics, the security analytics with that data. And, and there is a lack of data scientists who have security background. So there is a shortage of that uh, combined skill. So if you can develop that, you know, you 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 can be a star. And then don't hesitate. Reach out to people who can help you. Let's say they can conduct informational interviews for you. LinkedIn, reach out to people. You will be surprised how many times people who are in some 
position where they can they have the experience and the visibility and the expertise how willing they will be to help you with providing you the guidance preparing for a cybersecurity career network you know with other people of at, at every level and then then take these approaches and and you definitely will end up having a, a lucrative career for the next 30 years i heard at least right um, next slide please my last slide and what i want here to to focus on is you don't only need you don't just need the the technical skills yes you it's amazing if you have a stem background but if not if you are a liberal arts graduate you can do many more things with that you can actually you know if what we are looking for what i as a CISO am looking for is the curiosity you should have you should be curious you should want to learn new things you should ask why you should have the critical thinking that analytical skills try to divide the thing try to break it and and try to understand how it all comes together and then uh, you know as someone mentioned earlier the soft skills in terms of writing and speaking communication skills those are very important so go ahead you know explore those those um, avenues and then there are some i did not put those in the slides but you can check sans.org you can check krebs on security dot com uh, you can check isc squared isc2 dot org and there are many many other resources available for you to learn more about cyber so i will leave you with that thought and the slide is kind of uh, gone away but it's not your aptitude it's your attitude that will determine how high you fly so good luck and thank you for having me thank you so much for a wonderful wonderful enriching and enlightening keynote address to our attendees we're so glad to have you here today gurdeep Kaur, and we have appreciated all that you've shared and your last outgoing message about attitude this is so important for our future cybersecurity individuals so thank you very much i'll pass this over to susan now Gurdeep, that was in a fantastic speech and we will get from you all those resources and we'll put them in our Whova app. Thank you so very much, Gurdeep. We will have a we will put in chat in Whova to answer some of these questions. And I would like to say that um, uh, for G Gurdeep, Thank you so much. Um, we didn't get a chance to talk about your background in the beginning, but just let me briefly let everyone know what an amazing professional you are and how honored we are to have you here today. In your current role as Chief Information Security Officer for PSEG since September 2018, you are responsible for managing enterprise technology risk and compliance with cybersecurity requirements of applicable laws and regulations. And PSEG is one of the biggest utilities in the United States. That's quite a job. You are an accomplished information security professional with over 20 years of core experience in enterprise IT security management. And previously, you were the director of the information security at Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. Prior to that, you were the chief security architect for AIG, and you also serve as the founder president of the International Information System Security Certification Secu Consortium of New Jersey Chapter, chair of the North American Advisory Council, and member of Cloud Security Alliance Global Enterprise Advisory Board. You received your bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from a Delhi College of Engineering in New Delhi, India, and you hold multiple certifications in cybersecurity. You are an inspiring role model, and we are so honored that you generously shared your time and expertise with us this morning, and we will make sure that our students can stay in touch with you. Thank you so very much for an inspiring and informative keynote address. Now we will go on to 
four sessions. They will be 50 minutes each. The workshops, there will be two simultaneously from 10 o'clock to 1050. And then the second round will begin at um, 11 o'clock to 1150. We'll take a break after that till 1230. And then we'll continue with our day in a life session. And Gurdeep, you mentioned that your um, that Python is your favorite programming language. Well, guess what? We're having three um, skill sessions today on Python and other coding. So everyone stay tuned for an exciting day and thank you so much Gurdeep and our other speakers.